Today, Apple announced their M3 lineup. AMD is going to begin focusing on this. Ryzen 8000 and 9000 APUs leak, and hard drives are officially dead for PC gamers. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, while I usually focus on PC hardware, it's always nice to look at what Apple is doing from time to time. And just recently, the company announced their next generation M3, M3 Pro, and M3 Max chips. Starting things off, we have the integrated GPU, which finally incorporates hardware accelerated ray tracing as well as mesh shaders. And as usual with Apple, they're pretending this is brand new and hasn't been done for the last four years. One thing that is really interesting is their dynamic caching, which essentially allocate shared memory to the GPU dynamically, rather than going by the maximum amount the program could use and reserving that. Moving on to the CPU, the performance cores got a decent boost of 15% over last gen, with the efficiency cores getting a very nice 30% performance boost. When it comes to specs, the M3 is an 8-core CPU with a 10-core GPU and support for up to 24 gigabytes of unified memory. The M3 Pro comes with up to 12 CPU cores, 18 GPU cores, and up to 36 gigabytes of unified memory. Finally is the M3 Max, which comes with up to 16 CPU cores, 40 GPU cores, and up to 128 gigabytes of unified memory. All in all, these do look like a nice upgrade, along with the MacBooks that they come in, but we'll have to see when reviews drop. Next up for today, it looks like NVIDIA won't be the only company heavily relying on demand from AI to prop them up. During AMD's Q3 earnings call, the company made it clear that they're going to begin putting a heavy emphasis on AI moving forward. AMD's own CEO stated, quote, Based on the rapid progress we are making with our AI roadmap execution and purchase commitments from cloud customers, we now expect data center GPU revenue to be approximately $400 million in the fourth quarter and exceed $2 billion in 2024 as revenue ramps throughout the year. This growth would make the MI300 the fastest product to ramp to $1 billion in sales in AMD history. Of course, it's not a surprise that AMD would begin focusing more on AI in the future. I mean, look at the success NVIDIA has seen from the popular new tech technology. In just the past four years, NVIDIA's stock has gone up around 600%, so you can't really blame AMD, but let's just hope this new focus doesn't hamper funds to their gaming segment. Who am I kidding? It already looks to be happening. With that said, if you want to show AMD and other companies that there's still a ton of support for PC gaming hardware, make sure you subscribe to GamerMelt. Next up, we have new information on AMD's upcoming Ryzen 8000 and 9000 APUs. This story comes from a new video by Moore's Law is Dead, where you can see he shared a roadmap for AMD's next generation APUs. Starting things off, we can see that AMD plans to continue with Dragon Range for their high-end CPUs with X3D. In 2025, though, they're apparently set to release Fire Range, which will come with up to 16 core CPUs with X3D as well. Those are set to be built on their next generation Zen 5. Next, we have the Strix Halo APU that I've discussed before. Remember that this bad boy is set to be an APU that also comes with 16 cores, but it includes a whopping 40 CUs based on RDNA 3.5. So this would completely obliterate the lower end discrete GPU market. It also may offer variants with AMD's XDNA2 accelerator. These are set to be based on the 4 nanometer process and Zen 5. Next, we have the lower end Strix point, which would come with up to 12 cores, RDNA 3.5, and potentially even XDNA2. You'll notice that they mentioned 45 to 50 tops for some of these parts, and that's essentially a metric used for the theoretical maximum AI performance. And I think this further shows just how much of a focus AMD is planning to put on AI. Moving further down the list, we have Hawkpoint, which is based on Zen 4, RDNA3, and gets up to 16 tops. In 2025, we'll apparently see Kraken Point, which would come with up to 8 cores still, but be built on Zen 5 and RDNA 3.5 and get between 45 and 50 tops. Moving down, you can see these are more on the lower end of the spectrum, with the budget Mendocino continuing to be used through 2025. And lastly for today, hard drives are officially dead when it comes to PC gaming. 
What sucks is that at the same time, PC games have become absolutely massive, with plenty of games requiring well over 100 gigabytes of storage. It all started with Bethesda's first new IP in 25 years, Starfield, as the game required a 125 gigabyte SSD. And that's not recommended settings, that's literally the minimum. One YouTuber decided to try it out with a 7200 RPM hard drive for themselves, and as you can see, there are some major stuttering issues. It may ultimately be playable, but you definitely wouldn't want to. Shortly after we received word on Starfield, the minimum specs for Cyberpunk 2077's Phantom Liberty update showed an SSD as a requirement as well. Alan Wake 2 also requires an SSD to play, and now Ubisoft has revealed that Avatar Frontiers of Pandora's minimum requirements need at least a 90GB SSD. Basically, more and more games are beginning to require faster storage, so I definitely call hard drives dead for PC. And sure, SSDs have gotten significantly cheaper over the years, I'll likely include a couple suggestions with affiliate links in the description if you're interested, but it still sucks because games have gotten massive and hard drives are incredibly cheap, still much cheaper than SSDs. I have no doubt that it has a lot to do with the new tech like Microsoft's direct storage, so we are ultimately going to get faster load times, etc., but this is still a sad day. So while that does it for today, are you still running a hard drive in your gaming PC? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe, and as always, have a great day!